Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Well, it's our Sunday night together, and what better way to celebrate our voiceover community than with two people who know more about social networking than anyone else in the biz. The hosts of VoiceOver Cafe, Terry Daniel and Trish Bassani. They'll be here to talk about their show and a little bit more about social networking. Two of our favorite people in the voiceover community. I love them. Great personalities, too. I've got a headset mic on, you might notice, and I'd like to talk about why you might consider using a mic like this for doing audiobooks, the pros and the cons. And uh, thinking outside the box here, I thought you guys might like to hear something, a different angle on voice recording on audiobooks. Right, and going inside the box of your studio, in my tip of the week, we'll talk about what to listen for when listening for acoustical problems in your home studio. You don't know what they are, you're not going to be able to identify them. And speaking of acoustics, I also got a product sent over to me by ATS I'll be talking about, and I've got more video clips from the NAM show to share with you guys. All right, that's East West Audio Body Shop, episode 83, this Sunday night, 9 in the East. And 6 o'clock in the West. We'll see you then. He's the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He's a voice actor and the home studio master, hailing from Buffalo, New York. His home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen, and the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica and his penthouse studio in Buffalo, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together, we are East East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Well, I got to tell you, there's only one way to describe this week. You know what that is, George? Lightning in a bottle? No, 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 no. It's, you know, had, had the Mayans actually had calculators, they were off by, you know, just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit, you know, 17,000 miles, you know, had they done it, you know, they were like, oh, that was going to miss and the calendar would have gone on. <laughs> but no, no, they were, they were just off. They didn't have the calculators. It was like one stone, two stones. So, yeah, that looks right. <laughs> they weren't quite with it. So, oh well. Wow, what a week! Jeez. Yeah, what's going on in your neck of the woods besides snow? Well, you no, know, not much. Not that much snow, but it's cold. Oh boy, you know, it's it was like, you know, the, the Marcy and I were driving home from somewhere today, and it was like you were passed by. Winter. Were you passed what's by it? some sled dogs? Yeah, it was that, and you know, and you know, the abominable snowman came by, and you know, stuff like that. It was, <laughs> it was definitely cool. Yeah, cooler than it has been, and for mid February, that's nothing new. But we've been getting away with it. So I won't but tell I'll you what I did just, all day. What's that? I won't tell you what I did that all day. Now. Well, well, well. What's what? How's the weather <laughs> in Southern California? Well, it was in the high sixties and sunny, and we spent the uh, last few hours out on the beach, Ella and I. So not so ah. Uh, that's what's your favorite place with her. Yeah, that's her favorite place. That's for sure. You must have an album of pictures about this thick of you, the two of you on the beach. If I printed them, yeah, they probably would be that thick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my wife's always like, we never talk any pictures of the kids. You're going to have like this museum full of stuff yeah. with Ella. The album's she's actually very... about this thick. Yeah. But okay. if you could see right now, I'm holding up an SD card. <laughs> All right. Geek joke out of the way. All right. <laughs> well, we have a fabulous show for you tonight. And by the looks of it, a fabulous amount of people have showed up to uh, actually check us out. Yay. <laughs> you fools. <laughs> anyway, now we've got a couple of, couple of my favorite people in the business. Uh, people who I know personally, which is always nice. Of course, and, I think they I know, to, I, and they still wanted to come on the show. And they still wanted to come on the show. We're still trying to figure that one out. Um, Trish the Dish, Trish Bassani is going to be with us along with her co-host at VoiceOver Cafe, the inimitable, if that's even a word, Terry Daniel is going to be with us tonight. Now, they've got a great show called VoiceOver Cafe, not competitors of ours. It's about more about voiceover than it is about 
voiceover technology, although you know, we tend to cross over in all sorts of The crap. way I look at it, I don't think we really truly have any competitors. Is anybody else doing a live broadcast every single week, you know, like we're doing? I don't think, I don't think so. Live! Nobody, yeah, truly live. I don't think anybody else is doing that, so. There is no competition, so the field is wide open for one of you guys to open up shop and start doing your own show. Everybody should, you know. It's I mean, fun. it's it's fun. It's amazing that we've been able to actually put a show like this together, and people show up for it every week and show up in the chat room. I think they actually show up in the chat room just to laugh at us. Oh yeah, but, totally. But they keep coming, so it's the chat it must room really is the, be funny. the chat room is a big reason to attend the show uh, live. I mean, that's yes. a really big reason. And then to be able to interact with uh, not only our guests, but even but us. Because I, I, I watch the chat room out of the corner of my eye, the whole show. So it's very, you know, we keep it going and we like to keep you guys involved. So that's the being live here, 6 o'clock uh, Pacific time and 9 o'clock Eastern time is what is a lot of fun. So if you can join us next time, please do. Yeah, every week. Well, next week we got a different, but we'll talk about next that. Next week, yeah. Yes, but we got lots of other cool stuff to talk about tonight. I know you've got something interesting to present to us. I've got my tip of the week, mm -hmm. which uh, you know is again stars my house. It's sort of like a reality show some day, some weeks. <laughs> exactly. You know. You know. So uh, because I, what's my set? It's where I live. It's you know, it's a typical thing with us voice actors is we do our jobs where we live and it sort of bleeds into everything else. So yes, we'll, it does. We'll that. But you wanted to talk about, um, this thing you've got on your head tonight. Yeah. Can you see it actually? Let me see if I can, if I turn and Boy. zoom. See, so, yeah, it looks sort of like, you know, an antenna coming out of your, your nose. Oh, there it is. This, that's the microphone I'm using tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, wow, this impressive. little guy right here. I just thought, you know, it, let's try something different for those of you who spend have to spend hours and hours on mic. Um, and, you know, and I'm thinking mostly at this point, I'm thinking mostly about uh, the, the book narrators out there. Because, frankly, that is what is getting the most attention right now. That's who is contacting us the most heavily. And so that's kind of what's on my brain lately is, is audiobooks. So, um you know, there's always new mics coming out. Everybody wants to know, how's this mic? How's that mic? How's this? And, you know, there's a lot of others of you out there who do great jobs blogging about new mics and all this. So when something else pops up on my radar that nobody else has even thought about using, apparently, at least that I've heard of directly, I figured, why not? Let's give it a shot. So went on eBay, dug, dug around. I was looking for a headset mic that I, you know, I thought was within the budget of, you know, not something that I could throw away if I had to or sell it again and not take a big hit. So I grabbed this uh, Rode brand mic, which comes in this crazy kit. I mean, it comes with lots of accessories. Um, it's a model HS1-P, and I'll tell you what the P means in a minute because it's um, something to, to look out for that I didn't know about. But it comes with uh, all sorts of pop screens and even one of these huge uh fluffy windscreens for working outside you know it comes with tools and parts and replace it really is a really nice package so i grabbed this thing off of ebay the first one i got did not work now it was used so you know i was buying it from someone used for about third retail value um but what's amazing is it didn't work i i contacted road and they shipped me another one brand new i wow. shipped them the old one they just shipped me a new one i mean that's pretty amazing. I mean, that's that's some really amazing customer service, I have to say. I have to give them big kudos for that. I can't guarantee they would do that for everything, but who knows what it was. But maybe they, they felt uh, it was so simple that why not just, um, you know, why not just replace it? So, and then the other part of the equation is you have to get this little thing called the Rode Micon 5, which is the adapter that goes from the headphone or the headset mic line to XLR, so you can plug it into your console or your mic preamp or your mic port pro or whatever you have because it just runs on 48 phantom, it uses 48 uh, phantom power. So um, anyway, this is what it sounds like. I am not, of course, our show has some processing on it. Obviously, we always use some compression and gating. Um, I've got a little bit of bottom end boosted up on it and a little bit of top end boosted up on it because I find it's a little mid-rangey. 
Um, but uh, but that's about it. And you know, I don't think it's necessarily one of those mics that I would advertise as this is the mic I use, or um, I wouldn't necessarily say this would be my star mic that I would use every for for everything. But if if you want something uh, that you can use comfortably where you can move around i mean the fact that i can move around this much and always be on mic i think would be really really nice for audiobooks i mean i think it'd be great to be able to sit down comfortably uh maybe you know um sit in a posture that you may not normally need to now again you still have to watch your posture because you are voice acting so that is important but you don't necessarily have to, have to be locked in front of a mic at the exact right position for hours and hours, day in, day out, or you know, because that's can be tiring. So I mean, it's something to think about. You may want to consider trying something like this if you if you're doing audiobooks. Another advantage of a mic like this is when you put it back on your head the next time, it's pretty much guaranteed it's going to be within a, a half an inch or so of the of the location it was last time. So that gives you consistency. So each time you put on the mic, it's in the same spot. Um, you could always take a picture of yourself just to remind you how you had the mic last time. But boy, does that make it easier, more easy when you're doing, um, uh, easy when you have to do pickups. You know, uh, maybe a month goes by, you've already done the book. It's as far as you're concerned, it's in the can and it's finished. Then the proofer finally comes back and says, "Here's all the pickups." Now you got to make sure you get the mic in the exact same spot so everything matches and all this. If you have a mic like this, it's one less thing to have to think about. Is my mic in the right place? So, you know, the reason... Oh, yeah. So the, about the model number, this is the HS1P. Apparently, the HS1P is their um, high... Uh, what is it? Um, high SPL version. In other words, it's less... Yeah, it's less sensitive. So this mic is designed really for um, probably like fitness classes and live music and, you know, things where you're going to be speaking or even yelling. So this mic can handle it. You can really get, you, you can really yell into this thing. I just clipped it a little bit. I didn't back down the game, but you can get pretty loud without clipping. But the flip side of that is, is that the mic tends to have a little bit higher noise floor because of that, um, because it's not as sensitive. I have to run the gain on the mixer right now to get the levels we're doing at probably, I'd say, 85% gain, or, you know, most of the way up. And with a good uh, large diaphragm condenser mic that you'd use in a studio, you don't need to run gain usually nearly that high. So um, it's a, it's a trade-off. So I think the self-noise of it, it's a little on the high side. When I'm just sitting here listening to it idling and not even talking, I get a pretty um, pretty clear sort of a, a soft white noise, you know, a soft hiss that I wouldn't get from a, like a really good quality or even a relatively cheap condenser mic like this Audio-Technica 3035. So that is, that is the trade-off. But for many of you, that may not really be an issue because... Your home studios may not be that quiet to begin with, and that's right. Maybe the self noise of this mic is already is 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 actually lower than the ambient noise in your room. Right. So well, I must I must say that you know you were saying that it 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 tends to be a little bit mid rangey. It's like like with Harlan's headphones last week. Another plug. <laughs> um, it's very clear. I mean, it's it's actually clearer than your than the Audix you've been using. It actually sounds far more real. Yeah, and I've, well, I've had the Audix going through a chain of processing that, frankly, is probably pretty out of whack. And uh, it's not been working very well. It needs some TLC. And I have it going through its own compressor and its own noise gate. And for what I'm doing tonight, I'm just running this straight into the board. I'm not doing any front-end processing at all. It's just a little EQ, like I said, to sweeten it up slightly. And then, of course, our show's master uh, uh, processing for broadcast is going on too so you're kind of hearing the two mixed together so yeah one of these days i'll um um one of these days i'll actually post a, a sample of it i've been getting into that lately if you guys <clears throat> list follow me on uh soundcloud or you see my tweets that come out from soundcloud i've been posting random things that i'm experimenting with so i'll get a post up soon of me using this mic to maybe record a little bit of uh audiobook narration so you can got guys can get an idea but you know what 
I've heard of guys, I saw somebody on one of the audiobook forums saying, I did a whole book with an Apogee mic just to try it, just because I could. An I've Apogee mic and an iPad, you know, and uh, <laughs> this stuff works, you know, and I'm not saying that audiobooks don't require great audio, but I think there's a certain sort of a, a window that is, if you can achieve that quality of, of that, that bar and get into that bar, then you're fine. You know, yeah. um, that's kind of my attitude on it. And of course, a lot can be done on the post end to spice things up a little bit, you know, make it a little bit cleaner than maybe you, it, it seems to be on the, on the onset. So give one a shot. If you see one on eBay or, or, uh, I think these new or, you know, map retail or whatever you call it are two ninety nine. So it's not, it's not astronomical. Yeah. Um, for that price, you can buy a pretty nice microphone, but uh, give it a I've try. Got some, I've got some special processing going on with this mic tonight. You know, Frank and Mike has returned, by the way. Yes. He's, he's here, so you can, you can see Frank and Mike. I have, I have he, another, yeah. What? Oh, I was just going to show, if, you, if this is the mic that I want to demo one of these days. Um, this is something I saw demoed at the NAMM show. I'll show a video clip from it later. This is um, the creme de la creme of headset mics. It's about a $700 headset mic. Um, but what you get for that money is a mic that sounds so good that you can do all of the live singing from the movie Les Mis on a mic like this. Because this is what they were using. One day more. They weren't using it on their face. They were using it um, mounted to their chest, la- a lapel la- or lavalier style. But this is the mic they use. So if you saw that movie, which I did recently, just because I wanted to hear that audio, mind blowing how yeah. good it sounds. So yeah. it, all they had to do was hide it with a dirty rag. Well, they did all sorts <laughs> of tricks. Yeah, they hit it on the long, on the wide shots. They didn't have to hide it that much because you couldn't really see it. And on the tight shots, it's cropped out. It was on all the medium shots. They CGI'd out the microphone. They painted it out. You know. Right. So. All right. Yeah. Also, I was going to show that I've got this other processing on on um, on Frank and Mike. Uh, our 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 dear friend Amy Snidely, who will be joining us in just a couple of weeks. Sweet. Uh, sent me this new thing, a mic mitt. Maybe some of you have gotten it. <laughs> it's well, it's it's a set. Well, I, it, of course, it had the nose on it, it, and it worked perfectly here on with you know with Frank and Mike. But yeah. uh, but it also has a little hole in here for for uh, lip balm. Which in, in reality, this is a mitten, I think, and she just pushed it in, <laughs> and that's that's where she puts. That's her hilarious. Lip balm. Now, is it, it is. intended to actually act as a pop screen, or is it more intended to just be a way to protect your mic when you're not using it? Well, here in Buffalo, we need to keep our mics nice and cozy, so that's <laughs> that's what it's for. It's it's a mic cover. You know, you can you can use a you know a a, a Chivas Regal bag, or you can use. A mic mitt. Well, with that mic, you can you can use it with the thing on the on the mic because uh, it doesn't have a really bright top end anyway. So that's right. It's not that's really right. affecting the top end of the mic that much. That is true. Well, we got lots more to come tonight, and we are just rambling on. And you're all here to see somebody else besides us. No, you're here to see us, and our guests, and our show, and all the marvelous things we present, which we will bring to you in just a minute, right after this. So don't go away. Back to East West Audio Body Shop, where every week it's Apollo 13. Ain't that the so, truth? <laughs> yeah. So far, not this week. Though. Yeah, so far, so good. You know, as, but as Groucho Marx said, it's early yet. <laughs> um, there's a whole other joke that goes with that, but we'll just save that for <laughs> right. another time. Uh, we got more coming up here, but right now, 
What did I say I was going to do? I was going to have it ready and everything? And it... Just sit back and relax. It's time for some announcements. All right. We got lots going on here. Well, okay. Well, we talk about our memberships every week. You know, thirty nine ninety five a month. You get us whenever you want us. Middle of the night, call us at no. You can only email us. We promise you 24-hour response back. And we'll answer your questions on anything, but mostly on home voiceover technology. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to all our donors who've been giving rather generously. It's been, you know, it's, it was, it, of course, it was um, membership week on all the PBS stations this week. Oh, we were competing all, with all, PBS, huh? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we're <laughs> far, you know, we bring you far better content from the four corners of the world. Take um, that, big bird. Exactly. One, <laughs> two, three. Ouch. Uh, you've got a webinar coming up with our with the voiceover. Oh, yeah, it's not? coming really soon. That's right. It's coming up on Wednesday. Uh, it's at six o'clock, and it's at Voiceover Extra, or that's X T R A. In case you don't know, VoiceoverExtra.com, and it's about uh, mastering for audiobooks, and really, it's targeting those that are doing you know ACX projects, but it really can. It really applies to all audiobook mastering uh, process. But for those that are having to do it themselves, I'm trying to show ways to make it as easy as possible. And um, so tune in. I hope you can join us. And I'll also have Charles Clerk of ACX on there as well to answer all of your ACX-related questions. So I hope you can join us. All right. Now, a little bit further in the future, you know, if we don't get hit by another asteroid... <laughs> Oh man, uh, yeah. that was it's pretty terrifying, actually. Missed it by that much. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, uh, on May fourth, two thousand thirteen, which is this year, mm -hmm. uh, why don't you check out Voice World Toronto? Um, we're going to be up there, uh, just north of here, north of Buffalo, up in Toronto on May fourth. Uh, a, a bunch of great speakers are going to be there. The keynote speaker is our buddy Pat Fraley, the man of four thousand voice. It says 4,000 voices here. Yeah, he's probably adding some on every year. He's, he's, uh, he's added 3,000 voices since the last time we talked to him. <laughs> uh, an another fabulous babe, Ellie Ray Hennessy, who's been with us here. She is absolutely marvelous and just totally whacked out. Deb Monroe, who was with us last week. Uh -huh. David Cicerelli, who was one of the founders of Voices.com. Jim Van Horn, award-winning Canadian sports anchor. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, some idiot <laughs> named the home studio master is going to be there that talking guy. about home. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to, it. I'm looking forward to going up to uh, Toronto and, you know, being in front of a big crowd, uh, -huh. uh, Sunday muse, a voiceover artist, author, and coach, and Dave McCray, the voice man. Now that that's a Dave McCray. That's a voice. That's a name I know. Mm -hmm. Uh, then, then David's wife, uh, Stephanie, Stephanie Cicerelli, author of voice acting for dummies. We'll try to get her to change the name of the book. Uh, Wayne Young, <laughs> audio producer and mixing engineer, who I'll probably have some interesting conversations with. So that's on May 4th. All you have to do is go to www.voiceworldtoronto.ca. Or is it C-O? It should be, if it's Canada, it should be C-A. Uh, the, what I have here is C-O. Let me click on it and see if it works. Let's see, and then let's see where it, it goes. Dun, 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 dun. Redirecting you to voiceworldtoronto.com. Just go to .com. You'll be oh, fine. It's a .com. Okay. Yeah. I, the M fell off there. Yeah. Okay. What else we got going on here? Studio suit update. What's the latest? It's, work it's working. People are <laughs> wanting it. I'm getting calls and emails. I want it. So we're going to be, I'm, you know, I'm going to be getting the scissors out and cutting up a bunch of those this week. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that'll be different. Um, <laughs> Make sure you like us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. So that way you can never miss a show. I get emails or messages on Facebook every week. I missed the last show. How do I see the last show? Well, if you were subscribing on YouTube, you wouldn't miss it. So make sure you subscribe there. And uh, that's where we're really keeping things the most up to date. We're keeping all the shows on YouTube, uh, all the show notes, thanks to uh, Jason Lawson, are getting updated on YouTube. And one of our members, Lee Penny, Lee Penny is helping us get our pod podcast back on the air again. The uh, the iTunes and the the RSS feed thing from Podbean, so that you can listen to the audio version of the show. 
he's helping us get that going. It, it might take a while, but <laughs> he's go, he's helping us out um, just to help keep the show moving. And there's those of you that have been interested in hearing it on audio format, you know, we're going to get it working again. It's been quite a few episodes since I've had that. I happen to like it a lot, actually. I, I listen to a lot of these shows that are video shows, and I listen to them in audio format, including 60 Minutes. They actually wow. have a podcast, and I, I listen to that show a lot. And if something is like really cool, like the episode where they were, you know, free diving to 400 feet or something, I'll go to the website and, and watch it, you know? Really? Anyway, what else is Devin? Oh, let's see. Um, you, would you like to be a sponsor? Again, we can, you can have your name here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Maybe that's a right. Little, written a little neater, but anybody who knows me knows how crappy my handwriting is. Yeah. Uh, so, you, so yeah. we, we, you know, we could prepare something nice for you or you could prepare something nice for us, but there's right now there are 65 people watching this show live, live, just the live, live. viewers. And they're all voice actors. So if you have a product or service that has nothing to do with anybody but voice actors, this is the place to be. Yeah. Give, these, us, give us a call or write to us at uh, ewabshop at gmail.com. And the average show has probably five to ten times that many replays. So uh, it's, a, it's a great way to, to get exposure directly to the voiceover community. Talk about niche marketing. That's right. Well, this that's is this. called microcasting, the opposite of broadcasting. That's right. So, but to see it, you have to really like look carefully. <laughs> I know there's a show in there somewhere. Okay. Exactly. Anyway, time for my tip of the week. Oh and, yeah, that's right. And, and, and this one, you know, this is probably the number one problem that I get with a lot of people who call me and saying, what does my audio sound like? And I'm like, you sound like you're in a tube. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's, Take a look at what room reflection is really all about. So we'll all roll right. that. Here we go. Ninety percent of the quality of your home voiceover studio's audio is dependent on the acoustics of the area in which you record it. One of the worst enemies in any room is what we call room reflection, or slapback. The problems I experience with many of my home studio consultation clients is a lack of knowledge as to exactly what room reflection sounds like, and even if that reflection is occurring at all. There's a couple of reasons for this. Every room is different in size, configuration, what the walls are made of, and just as important, how loud you talk. But let's look into what it is that is not acceptable and why you may not hear it. Here's an extreme example. A hard room with hard surfaces. There's no mistaking the sound of your voice bouncing off of tile. Like a mirror, it sends back almost everything you say and then repeats the process because it doesn't absorb sound at all. And it just keeps reflecting all the sound waves. Can you hear what kind of a room I'm in now? It's a well-furnished, larger room. But you can tell that, can't you? What about this room? Yeah, it's got a pretty unique sound to it. Not a great place to record. Or here. You hear how softer objects tend to lessen room reflection a whole lot? What about in a closet? Well, sometimes closets can cause this type of a sound. If you're like under a shelf or under your desk. So if you listen properly, you can literally hear what room you're in. But why can't you sometimes tell what things actually sound like? Because you may be recording in an acoustically dead space, but listening in a very lively space. Or listening on regular computer speakers or laptop speakers, which can't handle the frequency response necessary to hear it. So learn to hear those types of reflection. None of them are good for your audio. If you have studio monitors, make sure the room is acoustically neutral and as dead as the space you recorded in. Or if you're wearing headphones, you should be able to discern how big the room is. And you know something? If you can, it's not right. And that's my tip of the week.
Yeah, I, it, it strikes me that people don't understand that you can't have that type of room reflection. You can't sound like you're in a big room. It's got to be acoustically neutral. It's got to be dead. And, you know, some people say, well, it has to have a little bit of life to it, but it can't sound like you're in a tube. And you can't certainly sound like you're in my bathroom. And if you're in my bathroom, get out of there. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Busy enough in this house as it is. I, I think that that I hear that a lot from people that see professional recording studios. You know, they see these unbelievable rooms and they get confused and they think that's what you know a small studio is going to look and sound like. And it's impossible to make a five by seven or a three by three room sound like a eighteen by twenty four by fifteen foot ceiling control. You know, recording studio. Right. So get that notion that having some liveliness in a closet uh, is going to be in any way useful out of your head because right. it, it just ain't so. <laughs> right. But you can use this stuff, my yeah. studio suit, which is, as we keep talking about, it's amazing stuff. It is making a world of difference. It is revolutionizing the home studio business. <laughs> One booth One at closet a time. at a time. Yeah. <laughs> One month at a time. Uh, yes. <laughs> but I mean, uh, the reason it does work is because it absorbs over a wide range of frequencies, not like what most thinner materials do or blankets and stuff that can only control mid to high range. That material he's using is thicker and denser and it, it, it absorbs more mid to low range stuff. Um, maybe this is a good time to mention that thing that's behind me. Um, this uh, yes. showed up from ATS Acoustics. This is called the uh, voice cabinet. And uh, the idea is that you can hang this thing on your, on your wall. So if you, you're working in a multi-purpose room, um, a bedroom or an office where you want it to still kind of look office-like when you're not recording, this could be a solution for you. I don't know if this thing all by itself would be enough to dampen the average room in a home. And I am using this headset mic, so it's probably not the easiest thing to demonstrate and show. But if I get in here, it is pretty darn dead. Um, sure it's is. amazing how much it sucks away. And it's it's made with, uh, um, it's got rock sole, that uh, mineral wool inside it. And it's got a door on each side. These doors both shut. I'll show you real quick. Do, 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 do. They shut like that, so it kind of looks like now like one of those, uh, you know, um, either it's, you said it looked like, a like a gun rack, a gun storage <laughs> a gun rack, cabinet, yeah. or maybe it looks like a dartboard <laughs> cabinet or something. But um, it's a pretty clever design, and uh, I think for some of you it could be really useful. I think in conjunction with other things, it could work great. Um, if you had, say you had a Porta Booth Plus or something up on a stand, but the space behind you was still too reflective, you could put this thing up on the wall, straddle the corner, or whatever space you want to work in, have it behind you, and it would do a, a, a fantastic job of absorbing. So you can hear now how much liver it is, even with my, how much more live it is, even with this microphone, with the doors shut. And I can, I'll open it back up to get it back to the way I had it before, because it does sound better. And, uh... There you have it. I mean, it, it makes, just when I walk into my room, into the office, not even talking, just the ambient sound of my step footsteps sounds so different with this thing open here. So yeah. anyway, just another take on uh, a way to treat a room. That's right. And 90% of the quality of your audio has to do with this stuff. That's right. You know, all this equipment and all this stuff, if it's set up right, if your room acoustics suck. So does your audio. Oh, somebody asked the uh, how big is this thing? It's two by it's two by four feet. Open it up and it's about four by four. So it's sitting right now on a shelf that's behind me. Yeah. But it comes with a, a ma mounting bracket so you can put it on the wall at the height you want. So sorry. All right. Well, we have guests waiting in the wings. Yes, we do. And uh, we don't want them, you know, flapping away on us. So uh, we'll be <laughs> back with, uh, with, with Terry Daniel and Trish Bassani in just a minute here on East West Audio Body Shop. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. 
Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, George has set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. Now back to the only webcast done with two cans, two geeks, and a string. East-West Audio Body Shop, with George Winham on his end in the West, and Dan Leonard in the East. All righty, we have returned. Me freezing my tuchus off here in the East, and you nice and warm wherever it is you are in Santa Monica. But we've got people all across the Fruited Plain joining us. You're in Minneapolis, right, Terry? I am. Thank you, Dan. Danny. No, Dan's fine. Dan's fine. Love you, Danny. Love you too, Danny. Uh, and joining us from New Jersey. Are you from Jersey? Trish yes, Bassani. Hi. All righty. Oh, so I, like, I got the joke there. Are you from Jersey? <laughs> that was Saturday Night Live, right? That's, that's right. <laughs> hey, do you guys have any idea where I could send my new demo? <laughs> <laughs> put it in an envelope. Put about 26 cents worth of postage on it. Do you need and, one of these things to play that? Is it like one of these cassette players? <laughs> yeah. George, George I know you guys can't see. One. Yeah, we can't we can't see you on screen right. there. But anyway. Uh yes. Anyway, but guys, welcome. I know you've 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 seen the show. Trish, we see you all the time. You and I run into each other constantly during the year at various uh various venues and stuff. And it's always a pleasure to see you. But welcome to East West Audio Body Shop to both of you. Thank you. I, I got to say, you know, I've, I've tuned into the show tonight and uh, your show is not only entertaining, but the chat room in the Ustream is just ridiculously addicting. It's, it's it happening, is, isn't, it? isn't it? It's like a drug. It's just, it's just, it's like a drug. It's, it's unbelievable. I know. And as long as they keep it clean in there, they can stay. That's right. Yes. Anyway, you guys are doing some fascinating stuff, but primarily you want to talk to us about your own show that you're doing. Which is called Voice Over Cafe. Cafe. Yes. I should have, we, <laughs> Trish, we should have had coffee mugs in our hand. Oh, I have mine no. right here. You got <laughs> your, say she's got hers. But do you have Voice Over Cafe, Cafe mugs? They're working on it. They're we working don't on have it yet. We do, uh, we, we're going to get all kinds of, uh, we actually just, we're getting Voice Over Cafe bed sheets. <laughs> Satin, uh, I hope. And pillowcases. And, uh, we're, we're getting <laughs> curtains and uh, a voiceover cafe adult products. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. No, yeah, really. Yeah, I'm sure anyway. Trisha proved that. Yeah. So, so what is <laughs> the show about? Yeah, give, us, give us a little background on it. Trish, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, well, uh, I don't know how many years ago, I guess it was probably close to six years ago. We started with voiceovers on demand. It was an original podcast that Terry had originally come up with. Um, he and I knew each other ba way back then. And uh, we had connected online because we had similar marketing techniques and all that. So uh, this was pre-Facebook, pre-VoiceOver Universe. Um, wow. And so, yeah, we kind of connected and we had started the show. And then VoiceOver Universe happened and the show blew up. It was really cool. We got, a gr we got great feedback on it. Um, 
we did uh, like 21 episodes, I think, in like a year, which was a lot. Um, but we had a lot of fun with it. And we got a pretty good, you know, numbers and stuff with it and just got great feedback. So um, we decided to take a hiatus because me and Terry got so busy and we just kind of stopped doing the show for a while like four years to be exact and um, I guess about I think it was last April we decided to start it back up and we renamed it um, the old shows are, are all also available but um, the uh, the new show is called the voiceover cafe and we've just been it, it's a it's always a work in progress so we've added some people we have a great team that we've put together and um, we've just been having a blast with it and we've done about we've done eight episodes so far and we have the ninth coming up next week yeah wow. the reason the real uh, Trish isn't really being completely truthful about something the real reason that we actually quit voiceovers on demand was I, I did join the Peace Corps to go find myself um, and kind of left left the country for, for many, many years. And uh, I'm just making all this up. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it didn't sound familiar. <laughs> now, we wanted to, we really wanted, we had a great time with it. And this new show, uh, with the help, of course, of Tom Deere and Sean Caldwell, Peter Bishop, uh, Rob Siglum Paglia, uh, many, many people. It's been kind of a, a nice brainstorming effort. We really wanted to, to, to pre have, have a presentation that really sounded like it was coming from a coffee shop, from like a cafe where we're running into different people and, and sitting down and having conversations with various uh, voice talents in our industry and uh, audio pros like you guys and just kind of a more a really relaxed uh, conversational feel. We didn't want it, you know, we're, we're really, we're still, the, the show is still a work in progress and we're really aiming it to just to have it that, that really laid back feel. We don't want anything too polished or too overproduced. Um, Trish, help me out here. That's kind of really what we're like, just kind of a casual cafe style of podcast. Yeah, yeah, and we, like I said, it's a work in progress, like, we keep adding things and taking things away and redoing things and re, you know, kind of ordering things, and, and, um, and we're just having fun with it, yeah, it's just, it's really supposed to be just, you know, we are voice talent, we're in the voice talent world, and we want to be able to talk to people as if they're our peers, which they are, and we just have a lot of fun with it and just to talk about relevant things you know keep up on events in the industry um news and and resources and pretty much everything you can think of that would help people either whether they're getting started they're just getting started or if they're you know already been in it for years like we well, like we both have what are some of the things that you've covered on there and what i mean you've had lots of guests on what are some of the interesting sort of topics that have crept up while you're sitting there sipping your cafe um well we've talked about things that that bug us i think like <laughs> if something happens it's just a bitch fest it's just a bitch yeah, fest. yeah. <laughs> it's just a it's about stuff that bothers us yeah you know and, and we do we had bo weaver on uh we've had several great guests um uh, Bo Weaver was our very first one. He was on episode two. Episode one of Voiceovers, uh, Voiceover Cafe is just us, me and Terry. And then um, we've added, or maybe I think we did have, well, we had Tom Deere with the Totally True Tales, which he tells a crazy story for a Totally True Tales segment. And we had a legal minute with Rob Sigel and Paglia. Yeah. Um, so we have, we've added the segments to the first uh, episode, but our first actual guest was episode two with Bo Weaver. And that just kind of kicked things off. And um, we've had Amy Snively on talking about FAFCON. Uh, who else have we had on, Terry? Um, we had recently, we had uh, Jeffrey Umberger, who was a mm -hmm. great, uh, great oh, guest. Yeah, we're just, yeah. you know. You know, and we got to have you guys on, obviously, not just because we're on your show, but we've been, Trish and I have been talking about having you guys on forever. Um, yeah. But we definitely want to get that done. Yeah, there's a little, you know, it's it's educational, but it's fun. You know, we got Rob Siglum Pagley that talks about a legal minute, anything, uh, you know, any legal questions, you know, we can usually answer on the show. Rob obviously takes care of that. And then Tom always has something really effed up happen to him during the week. So we usually, <laughs> we usually have him tell a story about that. The guy gets the weirdest phone calls and emails. I mean, I don't think there's a week that's gone by without something really off the wall that happens to him. So it's just, it's a combination of fun craziness and just good education for, for people, for, for newbies and for veteran voice. Talents. Should we, should we play a sample here real quick? Yeah. Let's give sure. people an idea of what it sounds like. 
And we'll just sort of stare at everybody else. Hopefully you pick a good clip. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful Charlotte, North Kakalaki. It's the VoiceOver Cafe live. <laughs> With a live studio audience and the solid gold dancers. Now presenting our <laughs> Nicely host for done, tonight, Don Pardo. Terry Daniel. <laughs> And Trish Bassani. <laughs> How about a hand for our imaging guy? And Sean Caldwell. Sean Caldwell. Who doesn't talk that way in real life? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for showing up to the VoiceOver Cafe. My name's Terry Daniel. Trish Bassani is here. Welcome. Here. Uh, Garcon. I need one of those real, like, feminine lattes, like, with a couple of bumps of vanilla with a sprinkly chocolate things on top. Can I get one of those, please? Well, first up, Garcon is boy. I ain't that to you, pal. Wow. Just, just give me anything with vanilla in it. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Peter? <laughs> it's, uh, yep. it's, it's really... I, I, I would say quir- the show is very quirky, so it's not, like, it shouldn't ever be taken seriously. Uh, yeah. There's great stuff in there, but... Uh, there's some really, <laughs> some really off the wall bits in there that might uh, that might be inviting to some people and scare the hell out of others. It's a really good. It's the super. charm of the show. And I think that it's a lot show, of fun. W- it, that show was actually done live. It was the only show we did live from Fafcon. So if you were to listen to the other episodes, it does sound a little bit different. It's a little more produced because we have everything pre-produced, um, the mm-hmm. liners and that sort of thing. Sean produces separately, and then we put everything together for the other episodes. But that one in particular was done live because we were all we were all at Fafcon. So we all got in the same room and we just had a blast with it. And we had a live audience. So yeah. I, I remember when we did eWebs from Fafcon the first time and, and when we were in Hershey, boy, that was, you know, talk about doing it by the seat of your pants. I had no idea what I was doing. And, but, uh, but it, now with your regular show, uh, you've got, it sounds like you're in a cafe or are you actually doing it from a cafe. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, I don't think we should give away. And we might, yeah, we, no, don't give that away. Keep the mystery. Might, yeah, we might be doing it from a cafe. You, we just don't even. I don't even know. I'm not even sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think the idea of doing. I think the having the cafe ambiance in the background is brilliant because it helps mask some of the background noise. So you don't have to worry about that. You know, the cafe takes care of it. Right. I'm always thinking of it from the dinner. Yeah, I'm always thinking of it from the geeky perspective. So that's oh, that, and that's yeah. We we've thought about that too. We figure the more crap we can throw in there, like sound effects, the the more that uh, the less likely we need good equipment. Yes, that's right. The <laughs> cappuccino. You can just have the steam thing. You know, the thing that goes. <laughs> just have that go on the whole show, and you know, <laughs> go, go to town. Oh, oh you know. I wanted what? to mention too. We were talking about the, our different guests. Uh, our next um, Terry, who tell them who we're going to have on next. Oh, a this good friend cool. of mine. A uh, good friend of mine is the one that uh, that won the audition to be the new Aflac deck. Uh, his name is uh, Dan McKig. He used to be the sales manager of KQRS, a rock station here in Minneapolis, and he won the uh, the, the audition. You know, three million people auditioned to to be the once they they fired what's his ass. Uh, they Gilbert they did Godfrey. Spat- yeah, Gilbert Godfrey. They did this mass audition, and Dan auditioned. He he put together a uh, you know a, an MP3 of like you know thirty different quacks or whatever from the KQ studio, and he actually won the job. So uh, he's going to be our next guest. He'll do a few demonstrations for us of different types of <laughs> ducky like quacks, and he's just a great guy to have on. I mean, he's just a fun guest. So that's uh, he is uh, slated to be our next guest. We don't know when we're recording it yet. Uh, hopefully this week we'll uh, we'll get that uh, squared away. Okay. And the magic question, of course, is how can someone access this particular fine production? Well, that's what's changed a little bit. And, and here to give you a little bit of that information right now is Trish the Dish Basati. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can go to voiceovercafe.org. Um, and we actually, we don't have the new site completely finished, but all, uh, episodes one through seven, the latest one is not up yet. Um, but we do have it there. So you can go to voiceovercafe.org and log on. Um, we literally in the last couple of hours got that, um, to the point where we can actually present it to the public. Um, and I want to just be like, give, um, Sean Caldwell a big shout out of, you know, for, for helping oh. that with that, because, 
he was he was um Peter Bishop was actually the catalyst behind it uh, of of actually doing it and or not not doing it but the idea of doing it and actually going on our own and um, and then uh, Sean basically put all the tools together and said let's do this and we can do it and we did and Sean you know uh, we we had the URL also you know already and we've just been getting the site uh, literally like kind of working furiously the last couple of hours just to try to get it up to snuff uh, to have everybody go there so go there it will change over the next couple of weeks but um, basically, it's it's presentable, and you can listen to any of the older uh, older shows. I'm impressed with Excellent. the effort because our website I built the hour before we went live on one of our shows one night <laughs> <laughs> using using Lawrence, Wix. That's the way you operate, though. That's that's how you do things. <laughs> Man, talk about you know by the seat of our pants. I'm like, yeah, hey, this looks cool. Yeah, this this uh, actually yeah, is a works. website. Yeah, maybe I'll tell everybody we have a website tonight. You know, and then the website was born. You know, yeah, <laughs> the years looks no, great. Yeah, but it looks great and, uh, and and very functional, and uh, you know I'm sure people click on things. It might actually take them somewhere too. So, uh, <laughs> so so it, that's that's you get the show from there, and uh, you probably you have some other information on there and updates on stuff you guys are up to or what. What are you guys working on? Actually, I know you yeah. guys have some special little show, projects show, of your by the own. Way, the show, by the way, will be uh, eventually be available on iTunes as well as soon as they uh, as soon as God, God willing. Really. Good yeah. luck. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's, it's been a bit of a process up to this far, but uh, uh, so far so good, and uh, it should it should be up there uh, pretty soon. So, excellent. Good. Well, you guys are both busy with a lot of other stuff because, like the rest of us, you're full time voice actors. And, uh, you know, you you think Tom Deere gets weird. See, the thing with Tom is he may get weird calls during the week. We all get those calls. He just writes them down. (laughs) (laughs) But Tom doesn't know is I'm actually the one calling him (laughs) Uh, and and just disguising my voice and just being a different character every time. I just haven't really admitted (laughs) that to him yet. Yes, of course. Now we're we're all going to call him this week. Yeah. (laughs) His <laughs> phone won't be, and it's going to be. Re- he's finally the, 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 hey, can you the phone against the wall. Me all your e-learning clients. <laughs> <laughs> that one was my favorite. Can you set client list so I can market to them? <laughs> That'll be seventy four thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah, just just like buying a domain. You know, we should start char- charging these people like fifty grand for our client lists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> If you get one, hey, great. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> what else do you have going on, Trish? Yeah, yeah. Trish, what are you um, up to? You got you got some cool stuff happening too. Thanks. Yeah, I uh, you know, about a year ago I launched a Spanish casting site. I don't speak Spanish, but I had a lot of clients calling me in the past years uh for Spanish speaking talent. They would, you know, I I'm the um I'm the first talent that a lot of my clients have, have worked with. Um I work with a, a lot of first timers mm. <laughs> and um, so they would call me and say, hey, do you know anybody that does what you do in Spanish? So I would have to find people. This was years ago when and I bought the domain in 2007, um, the URL, and I basically just kind of sat on it for a while because I didn't know quite what I wanted to do with it. And about a year ago uh, or maybe so, a year and a half ago, um, we launched it's called voicecasa.com and it's specifically for Spanish speaking talent but there the the site is targeted at English only speaking clients because I found that a lot of clients would call me and go we don't speak Spanish so we don't really know how to search for this person and I just found that there wasn't a good database um, of really good, of good, reliable talent. So we, you know, the um, we only we don't take anybody's money. We actually um, it is a it is a subscription based site. There is a free um, uh, membership available, uh, but if you do want to pay, I I. Um, I do uh, screen the people that try signing up to make sure that their demos are up to snuff. Um, And I don't just let anybody on the site. But you also have to be at least bilingual in to the point of being able to do business with uh, uh, English-only speaking clients. So um, Spanish voiceovers and then... um, which is Voice Casa, and then uh, I have Voice Tweet, which is a kind of a smaller site. Voice Casa is kind of my my main baby, besides my own voiceover business. So um, 
a voice tweet I launched a couple of years ago, and that's also a subscription based, but it's only seven dollars a month. It's really it's really just a matter of just to keep up um, with the the SEO and the the you know all the hosting mm. uh, fees How does and that, that work? sort of thing. Yeah, it's um it's a WordPress uh, site, and basically when you sign up for a listing. It's um, it, it it makes a comment basically you are like your listing is actually a comment on the WordPress um, and uh, I promote that on Twitter um, and so anybody using Twitter has you know will see the uh, basically whenever I see somebody on Twitter because I I do a lot of and make a lot of money from Twitter uh, fifteen thousand followers yeah yeah <laughs> so no, um didn't use one of those paid services either where you can know like fifteen thousand. these followers. are organic followers thousand of them are spam yeah. no these are real I've followers. been on it for a long time so i love twitter and uh, i just found that there was a ton of voiceover opportunities on there and i kind of wanted to share the wealth and and you know i i found that there's a great voiceover community on on twitter and i kind of wanted to bring us all together um that do voice talent uh, that do voiceovers and kind of get us all on one site um so basically instead of you know, when I see somebody tweeting about needing a voiceover, I reply back with that link instead of my own. Um, and it brings people to the site and then people see and can choose, you know, whatever. We have different languages. We have accents on there. And uh, it's a pretty good variety of talent. So they can kind of go and, and choose who they want. Fantastic. You are so enterprising. Man, you guys are awesome. <laughs> What, you guys each, I mean, you're, you know, social networking is what you guys are really, you know, been putting a lot of effort into for a good reason. Do you guys each have like one serious golden nugget for the audience, of, you know, on, on your most favorite tweet or uh, social networking platform? Well, I'll just, I'll tell you just real quick. That's how uh, I do all the, uh, the training materials for Subaru of America, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. all their, uh, their e-learning training stuff for all of their employees. And uh, that woman found me on uh, via my Facebook business page um, through a Facebook search. So people not, are not only uh, doing Google searches now for voice talents, but they're actually, you know, they're going into Facebook and going into that little search box up there and typing in like voiceover, voiceover actor, or voice talent. And uh, a lot of uh, Facebook, a lot of voiceover business pages are popping up, obviously, in the search. And that's how she found me. So that was my recent biggest success story of getting a a pretty darn good gig via uh, social networking. And I'm sure Trish has got, you know, quite a few uh, that are similar to that. I guess the moral of that story is to have a, you know, make sure you have a Facebook business page, not just a personal one. Well, have a Facebook business page and make sure that you have engaging content on there. You run contests, you ask people questions, do surveys, you know, add, uh, uh, cool YouTube videos of, of, of you doing a voiceover or, you know, some type of voice. I, I do a voiceover tip of the day every day on there that I've been pretty consistent about. Um, and, and really just engaging with your audience a lot, Trish, a lot like Twitter. You really, it's, it, it's like going to a big party. You really have to just uh, engage with all kinds of different people. And it's not always just about us. Yeah, it's not it's just, true. you know, you can't just constantly put commercials of yeah. yourself on there. It's it's all about interaction. You know, Look at it's, me it goes doing this. <laughs> <laughs> do you so, uh, like to share tips that other people have shared and just retweet? Do you do a lot of retweeting? Retweeting is huge. Yeah, we both mm -hmm. we, we both do a lot of RTing. <laughs> <laughs> RTing. Yes. RTing. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's very valuable. I found that I, the, I've given some people advice that that are afraid to tweet themselves, like original, you know, do original their own original tweets because people just are afraid for some reason to to do that. So I said, you know what, just retweet if if that gets you into the kind of motion of things, you know, when, when you start retweeting and understanding how people respond to that, then you can start writing your own. Um, so, but retweeting is, is huge and it can be very valuable. What do you think of automated tweeting tools that can tweet on your behalf on schedules, things like that? Do you think they're really a value or do you think they could be really a problem? I don't like them. 
Yeah, I know people that I think uh, Dave Corvo actually does use the automated, but um, I'm not a big fan of them. But it works for him. Um, I've I have never tried it because I'm just not. I I kind of want all of my stuff to be organic, and sometimes mm-hmm. I'm not on there for a couple of days. And I um, think you know. Yeah, and I think if you mix in, you know, a real personable tweets, I mean, you can kind of tell the ones that are kind of automatically set up. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and oh, yeah. I. You know, I'm not it, that 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 kind of takes away that personal element, that personable uh, element to it. And uh, you know, Twitter's all about having conversations with people. And another thing too, I might add is, you know, if, if if people ask you questions on Twitter, answer their questions. Don't don't blow them off because if you can get a conversation going as well, uh, you're gonna you're gonna gain more followers that way as well. Absolutely. Well, guys, it has been fabulous, just fabulous, finally having both of you on the show and, awesome. and telling us all about VoiceOver Cafe and, and all the neat stuff you're up to. And uh, so, when, so when do you think your next show is going to be on? Or uh, uh, this week? Well, probably. Well, that's another thing we got to work on is just getting a consistent, like knowing that the show is done and it's going to be posted on a certain day. And we're, we're definitely working toward that with, uh, with, with our schedules. But uh, yeah, just go to voiceovercafe.org. Um, we'll promote it like crazy, of course, via you know Google Plus, Facebook, and Twitter. But uh, it's uh, it should be up. We're going to try to get it up, you know, by this next coming weekend. I think Trish would be a good goal for that. Yeah, if we have the interview with Dan sometime th- this week, hopefully we'll set him up and just get it done. And it usually only takes a day or two to do the post production. That's right. great. So, See, that's the yeah. beauty of a live show is, and, and doing it every week is there's a hell of a lot of pressure to do it each week. <laughs> it's <laughs> I don't like, know how you guys do it on a Sunday night and everything else, but man, uh, do or so die. It's yeah, a we good show. You know, I don't, I, I don't have the chat room up, but I, I can feel that people are ripping me in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking. I'm can not you looking. See I didn't was want butchering to get me on I just there. glanced over. The first thing I saw was Barbara Streisand and King. Akshashveros. Akshashveros. They're talking about Purim. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, they have their own show going. They could care less I know. what What's the heck we're doing. Here? That's right. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for being with us, guys. And I look forward to seeing you both and both giving you a hug when, whenever we run into each other again, which will probably be in October or hopefully sooner. Maybe May. Maybe, yep. maybe May. Maybe one of the Faffers, Faff Camp, Faff World, Faff Con, <laughs> Faff City, whatever. I think there's like a hundred of them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah, and you were having a wonderful time at your first Spafcom. Yeah, let's uh, change the subject quickly. <laughs> <laughs> On that oh, note, was it, it was a wonderful experience. We can't wait to see you guys again. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having us on. We appreciate it. All righty. We'll have you on the cafe soon, or we'll, we'll have you at the cafe soon, I might. I, I think ask. that would be awesome. Hey, I have an I idea. Wait. Why don't we <laughs> tape it at 6 o'clock Pacific time on a Sunday night? Yeah. No, that would, be, that would be the lazy way out. <laughs> like, <laughs> do it live. Do a taping on your show live on our show. Two shows, right. two shows in one. That would be, <laughs> it, would be, it would be a retweeted, rebroadcast show. <laughs> that would be anyway, funny. Thanks for being with us, guys, and we will see you very soon. All right. All right. Take care, Bye, you guys. guys. Thanks again, Thank thanks again for having us on. All righty. Have a great All night. Right. All righty. Well, we still have more stuff to go here. You, you think it's just when you think it's it's we've done it all. There's still more to come here on East West Audio Body Shop. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. So what else are you planning on doing tonight? Hmm, I thought so. Now back to East West Audio Body Shop with Dan and George. Yeah, what yeah, that what? meant when I wrote that, but <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of like, you know, theater of the mind. I actually saw a great play this week. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, we get to see a lot of theater here in Buffalo, but uh, a, a great production of something called Mr. Benny, uh, a, an actor we know, doing a one-man show on, on Jack Benny. And oh, cool. for those of us old enough to remember Jack Benny, <laughs> I mean, really, um, he was fabulous. And it was, but it was talking about radio. And, and the way they described it was uh, footsteps and doors. And how, you know, how you can really create this image with, with audio. And I, we need to bring radio, uh, radio theater back. I know, I know there's groups that do it. I know there's a group in New York that has one. And there's a couple of other groups out there. We've got to bring this stuff back because I've done radio theater and it's just fun, fun stuff. And that's actually what they're doing on voiceover cafe because they're making it sound like they're in an actual cafe it's true it is like a little bit a little bit of a, a vo theater going on there yeah yeah and speaking about things that have been around for a while uh let's talk about <laughs> harlan hogan <laughs> <laughs> all right we got to show you the headphones if you didn't see the show last week let me change the shot here because i gotta Where are the headphones it's here such the a headphones. juggle every time i have to do this there's just no clean fun easy way to make this transition so talk amongst yourselves while i fix this Yes. There we go. And yes. action. Right. Okay. Well, I, I'm wearing mine, so you can like, you know, you can, of course, I can't hear a word I'm saying. Uh, I, I can't, I can't transition between you and the screen capture. Uh, okay. I, I'll possible. trust you on that. Anyway, <laughs> these are great headphones. If you, if you were, if you were with us last week, like most of you were, uh, Harlan was on and told us about these great headphones. They're not made of plastic. They're made of aluminum. They are made of leather. They have a tw they have a twist of flex watch band for a headband. It's like amazing. You can twist this thing into a knot. Uh, they're comfortable. The cups are made from leather, and the foam in it is memory foam. So after you're finished with your you know your voiceover session, you can actually take a nap on it. It's <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Uh, just so much detail went into these headphones, uh, but most importantly. They sound fabulous. They were designed for voiceover. They're not like for listening to rap music. Uh, you know, you ever hear guys, these cars going by and they've got this bass doom, running on doom, their car. Doom, it's like rattling doom, the windows. Doom. It's actually transmitting over the air. That's not what these things do. These are great for voiceover because they're, they're, they're even across the entire frequency and they sound real, just like you sound real tonight, George. Uh, and uh, you can get those over at voiceoveressentials.com where they've got all sorts of other great stuff, of course, like the Porta Booth and the Porta Booth Pro and the, uh, oh, what are some of the other things they have in there? Of well, course, he's got his, some new stuff his, too. He's got a pop he's got screen. The, the pop screen, which, uh, by the way, if you go back to a shot of me, you can actually uh, we'll do. see that I have, my, he, I got my Harlan Hogan pop screen. Uh, in in my studio now. Oh, and, let's get uh, in there. Let's get in there real tight. Let me see if I can yeah. zoom in on that. Put yeah, zoom here. Technology. Well, I'll I'll just walk back over there. <laughs> it's kind of blurry, but I I'm zoomed yeah. in real tight on it. Yeah. See now we can. Uh, where are we here? Okay. Yeah, you can see it's here. It's it's really nice because it it, uh, it stays it, put. It, it stays put, which you know I was not the case with my old one. He put a really nice flexible arm on this thing. Mm -hmm. So. So now as I walk back, you can like zoom back in. So we'll do. See if I can see follow if, you. See, as if we, you walk. see if we can do this. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so anyway. yeah, Harlan Hogan, the, the headphones are on limited time introductory one twenty nine, a hundred and twenty nine dollars for its their introductory price. Buy and, them. And they're gonna go up to one forty nine. That's the way Harlan works it. He always starts them at a nice low price and then jacks it up to its normal price after he gets a nice uh, head of steam going right but it's still a great price it is one, it is at the, 149 you're still getting the deal you know what these are a little more expensive than the sony's that are so popular but i think they sound twice as good and your ears will thank you for it because those sony's are the sony mdr 7506s that are so popular in my humble opinion are really harsh and really bright and uh not the best sounding uh, headphones for long use. These things you could wear for hours and uh, not feel a lot of fatigue, which I think is really crucial if you're going to be wearing headphones a lot of the day. So, yep. Yeah. So, voiceoveressentials.com. He's got everything you need, every possible thing you need for voiceover. 
including a guy who's a good voiceover actor himself, which is Harlan Hogan. Yeah. So, so if you can't do it yourself, you can always give him a call or give <laughs> me a call or give anybody else. Any, any one of you people that are in our chat room that are all voice actors, you should all get a call too. But if you're going to get voiceover stuff, go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Thank you, Harlan, our godfather of voiceover. Thank you, Harlan. Thanks for your support. You've been there since the beginning. We really, really appreciate it. He believed in what we were doing. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, we still got a few more other things going on here. Now, you you were at NAM a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, NAM. That's right. God, it feels like ancient history. I know, but there was all sorts of cool stuff. So do you have something you could show us, another great product that was there at uh, at NAM? I do. Let me uh, cue that up for you because I didn't do it the way I was supposed to and, and and wasn't prepared. To have oh. that clip up here because I've been I've been spending too much time staring at the uh, chat room to be completely honest. Oh well, yeah, cool. <laughs> there's a lot of people in there. Now. I've been having too much fun in the chat room hanging out. Um, let me see if I can find that clip about the headset microphone since I was on that topic earlier. Let me see if I can find that clip because it kind of dovetails into what I was talking about earlier, right. and right. I've got a lot of video clips here. And and you've got that available on our website and uh, I do. actually it's it's it was it's in the members area. Right now it's only in the members only area, but I've made it public on the uh, YouTube page. So if you go to our YouTube page, uh, our YouTube channel, the Ewabs YouTube channel, you'll see there's 11 videos from Nam on there and I do have more to do, but um they are available to watch. So here is the one about the DPA microphone that I thought would be a really interesting take on a voiceover mic that would sound definitely uh, better than broadcast quality. I dare to say studio quality in a headset mic. These things are pretty remarkable. Let me see if I can get this to play here. Awesome. Hey, welcome to the East West Body Shop today. East West, right? East West Audio Body Shop. Audio (laughs) Shop, Audio Body Shop. (laughs) Hey, welcome to the East West Audio Body Shop today. Uh, my name is Bryce, and I'm with DPA Microphones in uh, Colorado, actually. Uh, DPA is a Danish company, and our U.S. distributor is, uh, the office is in Colorado, one of the best places you could ever live. Just had to throw that in there. Um, <laughs> we want to talk about the headset mics today. Why? Because we're recording audiobooks. Uh, we thought it'd be uh, relevant to talk about why, in general, a headset might be a good relevant um, type of mic to use when recording for audiobooks. Um, Let's start with uh, just looking at the headset. A couple a features pop here screen on that. Uh, to note. Mikey's I'm going to pull this one out. Really? That's a shotgun a nice mic zipper, that he's a nice holding. Little zipper case. You know, it's funny. I had my own transmitter, and I'd carry and, it around. Yeah. All right. And they would want so to put their own mics so on it. See it? <laughs> uh, of course. First of all, we have a nice uh, spring, really comfort uh, spring wraps around the ear. It's on a logarithmic curve, so if you have a big ear or a small ear, it's the same it's amount like of tension, cochlear no implant. matter what. Uh, Easy on, easy off. It slides back and forth in this track, as you can see, so it's very adjustable to the to the position of the mouth. Um, It also detaches for service. Uh, The boom here will come off at this joint. Uh, You can take it off. Uh, You can also rotate it for left mount. It's got that makeup and moisture protection filter. And while he's talking, there's a band playing literally so five feet covered, away from me, uh, behind me. You know, for, uh, for sweat and makeup and stuff, et cetera. Um, yeah, the cable is replaceable. Um, also, all wireless compatible. For audiobooks, you'd probably be using the That's standard ADR XLR shot mark, shot connector. Light. But if you're ever doing a public speaking presentation in, a, in another venue, then you can use it wirelessly as well. Um, it's super, super comfortable and really stable. When we're recording audiobooks, we're There's probably some of your talking typical into a microphone NAM show attendees back there. Yeah. Because of that, you want a mic that's inconspicuous <laughs> and out of the way. You, uh, you can move around and it stays in the same spot. It also is so lightweight and comfortable that you kind of forget you're wearing it. Um, the sound is going to be stable so that you don't have to position yourself uh, close or away from a mic and have sound coming in and out like so. Um, it, uh, the other thing is it's also very close to the mouth. So you have a good proximity, and it has a really nice warm depth to it. DPA specializes in miniature microphones that have really, really fantastic frequency response and uh, off-axis frequency response and handling capabilities, etc. That's why they're so popular for Broadway theatrical production, as well as film uh, making, uh, you know, a lot of movies and news broadcast. 
they have a really natural tone and uh, and will and and with books um, will sound exactly like you're speaking to uh, speaking to the audience and who is listening. Why do you think um, you would choose an Omni versus a cardioid capsule for a home studio booth, for example? Uh, there's a few advantages to an Omni capsule that for audiobook use that uh, would be advantageous versus a cardioid capsule. Uh, the Omni, first of all, has a broader frequency response. It's going to have more low end. It's going to be a, a little more. Uh, it's going to ha have more depth to it. It's also more forgiving in where it's placed. So if if you have it here versus here, it's only going to be a minimal sound difference um, versus a cardioid that's very sensitive. Um, the cardioids are great for rejecting other sounds around you, but at the same time, uh, in when you're reading for an audiobook, you're not necessarily needing to reject other sounds. So the Omni gives you forgiving placement as well as the most full body natural tone. Yeah. Thanks for being with us today. <laughs> I wanted that to run to the end because I thought that little tidbit at the end was actually kind of interesting. I've, yeah, I've really. always been kind of curious about they you know they make a uh, cardioid headset and lav mics and they make omni and why do you use one and over the other so i I'd, it was a long clip it was longer than i expected but i wanted to get to that end part because i thought that was kind of kind of interesting yeah fascinating it, well, what's amazing gonna... is like right behind me there was five women playing uh like acoustic instruments kind of like a blue new grass thing but yeah. there was no pa because they're all playing everybody's standing there wearing uh headsets and they were all running on wireless mics. And, you know, it's like a private concert for four people because you walk up and put on a pair of headphones. You know, it's, it's, oh, cool. it's, it's really, yeah, really amazing. Wow. But um, anyway, yeah, that was just uh, one of the clips. I haven't even posted that one online, I don't think yet. So that's the first time it's been seen. I have more that I'm going to share, another probably 10 more beyond what I already have on our YouTube channel. And I'll put them up on our website, ewabs.com and an easy place to find. It's a world premiere. That's right. That's right. Yes. I, you know, I totally sprung it on him. You know, I was like, so audiobooks, you know, and I'm sure the guy's thinking, what? But, you know, he's he, he went with it. He was like, okay, audiobooks. Let's talk about this in the context of audio. He had no audiobooks. idea what you were talking about. You know, I totally caught him <laughs> off guard. But uh, the mic he was holding, for those curious, you know, yeah, was, was cool. a, um, they have a handheld microphone unit that can then have other uh, capsules screwed onto it. So it was a handheld mic used for live singing, plugged into my little transmitter for the wireless, and then a shotgun capsule plugged into that, you know? And because cool. uh, I'd hand him my EV635A uh, hammer, <laughs> you know, from a yard sale, and they'd be like, uh, no, I'm not going to use it. Can I use a different mic? And I'm like, sure, go, go nuts, you know? It was really funny. So when you see the videos, sometimes the mic changes at random. You never know what mic they're going to be talking into. Oh, that must have been a riot. Well, I can't wait great. to see the rest of those. It was great. Right. Now, time for pick and clip of the week. Now, remember, you can have your studio on our show. Um, you know, you know, clean it up first. Um, you know, take <laughs> some pictures and, um, and send us a little bit of audio. I believe we have some pick and clip this week, do we, we not? We actually Let's, do. Nate. Somebody... Simino, I hope I'm saying your name right, buddy. It's yep. spelled C I M M I N O. Simino. Uh, oh, Simino. Simino, you're probably C right. Well, I'm in Buffalo. It's, <laughs> it's like the, the second most popular name to, uh, you know, um, you know, Gisevich. Is it really? No. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, when you live in buffalo you learn how to pronounce polish names oh okay well there you go and, and diane will back me up on that <laughs> uh, and so will Catherine. so um i have the uh i have this i have two shots that he sent in and these are this is a really kind of a this is a really neat setup yeah and then i've got an audio sample so let me slide the shots into the frame and then while i'm doing all that i'll play the audio sample the same time. Thanks for writing back so quickly. This is the sound of that little booth taking your suggestion into account of dropping the DBX out. So I'm just using the TLM 103 into the True Systems P solo into the Lexicon Alpha right into the Mac. And the room sound noise floor comes in, at least according to the meter on Audition, at negative 55 dB. He's playing some room tone, obviously, which uh, I'm 
I'm not sure how long it goes. But now, what I usually use the DBX for is a little DSing and a little gating. And it still seemed to run pretty close to that 55, between 50 and 55 dB with the DBX in. So I'm going to punch that in and give you a, a silent comparison. And this is the DBX in the circuit. So you know what I realize is that you guys are hearing this through our, our air chain, our you know, proper, through the processing. Because yeah. uh, yeah, what we really want you guys to hear when we play these is what's the raw sound out of what? What is it that these studios sound like? Right. And uh, what what he's been able to do here is create a very quiet space that's very very dead. Uh, and and you see how he did it. He used a lot of uh, obviously a lot of rock wool and and acoustical panels. A lot of this looks very homemade, but yeah. Again, you know, we're trying to prove here. You don't have to see where the sausage is made, but. This yeah. is actually a very nice unit. This is very similar to, uh, you know, the unit that we we show you with all the time. Let, let me play uh, a little bit more, Dan. I'm going to drop it into the show, uh, right into the player in the show, and this should mm -hmm. bypass our processing. Okay. So I'll play an, like another 30 seconds off the top again here. Hey, Dan, thanks for writing back so quickly. This is the sound of that little booth taking your suggestion into account of dropping the DBX out. So I'm just using the TLM-103 into the True Systems P solo, into the Lexicon Alpha, right into the Mac. And the room sound noise floor comes in, at least according to the meter on Audition, at negative 55 dB. Now, what I usually use the DBX for is a little DSing and a little gating. And it still seemed to run pretty close to that 55, between 50 and 55 dB with the DBX in. So I'm going to punch that in and give you a, a silent comparison. And this is the DBX in the circuit, so a little bit of processing. Uh, here's the room noise. Yes, 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 yes. Woohoo! So yeah, obviously with the uh, the noise gate in the room, room tone goes away. Right. Um, yeah, cool results from this space. Yeah, I mean it, it. Again, it doesn't have to be real sophisticated. He he thought this one out. He, he used put a the lot of work into this thing. I mean, yeah. it looks like the fabrication. He put some real time into it. Right. You know, sometimes it's best to have a room that you can fabricate. But if you don't have the room, make the room. And, uh, and that's, that was a good way to go about that. You, you know, using some, some wood planks and stuff. And the thing is, is if you do build those things, you really should make them out of as a hard of material you, as you can. Um, I didn't you know, catch uh, it. Are those doors? Are those I think like those, interior Those, those might be doors? Hollywood doors, but he, he, uh, obviously he has some, you know, some stuff in there. We'll have to ask him a little bit more about it, but he's got them on a hinge. So it's all portable. Yeah, he can a, move it to where he wants to, and it's flexible. And I, 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 I think it's a great design. Bravo! Yeah, good for you. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, what else we got going on here? Well, we got lots of cool stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. That's right, we do. Yeah. Now next week, which I failed to mention during our announcements, but well, this is our our second part of the follow up announcements. announcements. Follow up announcements. Next week we've got our Oscar party. Um, did we do this last year? No, we just we were we went dark during Oscars last year. So this year we decided to have uh, our our monthly Google Hangout, except it will be an Oscar party. So we can sit there and talk voiceover and go, oh, look at the dress she's wearing. <laughs> what are you oh. wearing? Yeah, and then what are you wearing? I'm wearing a little bit of spaghetti sauce. Uh, <laughs> you know, I couldn't, I didn't have time to change. So uh, yeah, yes, no, <laughs> that would be uh, me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that means I got to send my tux into the cleaners tomorrow with all my Hawaiian shirts, which are starting to really pile up. <laughs> um, but, uh, but you know, I'm, you know, I don't know, maybe we'll come up with something unique to do with that next week, but we'll be, uh, you know, we'll be bro broadcasting it on Ustream, but, uh, so you can watch if you don't want to participate, but if you want to come and be at our Oscar party, email us here at, uh, ewebshop at gmail.com and say, you want to be here for our Oscar party. And, uh, and if you were at our new year's party, you know, what a fun time that was. It was, it was uh, a lot of fun. then on the third of March, <clears throat> as we march on towards March and hopefully it'll start to warm up, uh, the, the lovely and talented and extremely funny Amy Snively will be joining us to talk to us about FAF world, the FAF domain. 
She's uh, we've got FAFCAP coming up in Atlanta and then FAFCON in uh, Texas in October. And uh, she's going to tell us all about that and all the wonderful stuff that that she's up to. Then on the 10th of March, put on your helmets. We've got uh, <laughs> Chuck Duran and Stacy from Voice Over Buzz Weekly are going to be joining us. And uh, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, last time we we were with them, it was kind of wild at that garden party in, uh, in at Disneyland. <laughs> exactly. Now we get to have them in our domain. So yes, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a lot of fun comparing our our notes about who we've had on our shows, and you know, because we've had a few common guests between us also. So I, I think it'll be fun to kind of to share uh, share some of our experiences with our guests and bounce uh, ideas off of each other. I think it's going to be a great time. Yes. Uh, And then uh, on the 17th, a good friend of mine, a Buffalo radio legend, uh, but he's not one of us. And he's actually, uh, you know, he's he's starting to get his, you know, get find his niche in voiceover. His name is Bob Taylor. Uh, Maybe some of you remember him from, you know, I know he was at a couple of stations, uh, you know, here in Buffalo and in Cincinnati with his uh, Taylor Harv or his his um, his partner, Harv Moore. Uh, And they had this gal used to do the news for them. Um, but now she lives in South Carolina, but we don't, we won't mention her name, but she knows who she is. Uh, and, uh, that'll be interesting. He's got a new product. Uh, what's the name of it now? It's, uh, well, he's going to tell us, he's going to tell us it's about, (laughs) it's, it has to do with posting your demos safely. Post, so posting that, auditions safely, right? Yeah, that, p- posting auditions and 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 your other stuff. You know, if you want to keep you know control of your intellectual and oral property, <laughs> vo uh, demo safe, vo demo safe. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, and then on the twenty fourth, you do not want to miss March twenty fourth. This is going to be the greatest ewabs of all time. You thought t- you know Tom Kenny was great. You thought Maurice <laughs> Tobias was great. You are not going to want to miss the Audio Masters Roundtable. We've got, uh, you know, four other guys that are going to be joining us. Well, three other guys besides George and I. And, um, uh, but uh, Uncle Roy uh, Yokelson will be with us. Joe Van Ripper and uh, Cliff Riper, Zellman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Joe Van Riper. Joe, well, we're, you know, that's going to be the first question. <laughs> Exactly, because we'll I've never heard him say his name. Talking about, well, it could be this, or it could <laughs> be that. Uh, but we're going to talk about voiceover technology with some other guys, and we'll have a roundtable discussion about it. And uh, you'll be amazed at how much we all agree on it, which means we're probably all right. <laughs> Maybe. Well, well, we'll see. <laughs> and then getting into April. Man, April, really? A- we got people already, in April? We're going to have people. Our producer's doing a great job. We're getting ahead, we're getting way ahead Jeffy. here, which makes we, we we which which is making our lives a heck of a lot easier. Uh, the the amazing Joyce Castellanos will be joining us, and uh, and she's got lots of stuff to talk about, and I can't wait to have her on. So, lots of stuff in the hopper here for East West Audio Body Shop. Um, <laughs> you know, if you have if you have a suggestion for a guest, if there's somebody you'd like to see on here. Um, you know, let us know at ewebs, uh, sh- ewebshop at gmail.com. Chances are he's already on our Catherine call him list. That's right. But if not, if you got somebody that you're like, oh, I would love to hear from this person, let us know and we'll do our best to track them down. That's right. You know, I'm, st- I'm still waiting for, for, uh, for Malcolm McDowell. I got some work <laughs> to do on that one. Uh, <laughs> okay. I- <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've I've got a few uh, celeb voices, celebra vox people that I would love to get on the show. It's just a matter of uh, luring them in, and you know, I'm thinking maybe I'd have to do them not live and do a pre-tape segment, just because yeah. their schedules are so wa- wacky, you know. Just get them whenever I can, and then just fly it in. So we'll see about that. Yeah. And that's why we, they pay them the big bucks. That's right. Anyway, well, we have reached the end of our time. Not that anybody's like saying, all right, you're over. You know, it's not like NBC's coming in and go, okay, we got to get this next show on. We usually just, try you know, to wrap within an hour and a 10, half. Yeah, 10, you know, 10.30 you know, or 7.30 yeah, or, yeah. or, you know, 6.30 in, uh, in okay. <laughs> We're I don't think it's 6.30 here. anywhere, actually, is it? Well, it's got to be 6.30 somewhere. In the middle of the ocean? Yeah, probably, or maybe the Baltic know, Sea or whatever. I don't know, not or, the Baltic. Or Midway, Midway yeah, Island. Yeah, Midway, Midway, there you go. Yeah. 
What's the time difference between LA and, and Hawaii? I think it's like four hours. Jeez. Yeah. That is way out there. Way out there. Way out there. I have to go out there. But anyway, um, so thank you all for being with us this week. Those of you joining us for the first time and going, what the heck are these two guys doing? Please join us again next week. Um, and where it'll, you'll see our Oscar party and then you'll really wonder. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, but we, there's lots of people we'd like to thank. Of course, our wonderful producer, Catherine Curridan joining us from San Diego and she's doing a wonderful job. And, uh, I, I th- we've ordered coffee mugs, so we're going to have lots of coffee mugs, you know, for our guests and stuff like that. But by the way, you can still go to the East West audio body shop shop. shop. And uh, order coffee mugs and T-shirts and all that other stuff there, too. So what's the address for that, George? Shop.ewabs.com. And there's a link right off the ewabs.com website, as well as a Donate Now button if you'd like to drop a couple shekels for helping to keep us on the air and pay for the Ustream feed so we don't have to have those really annoying preempting commercials that pop up in the middle of the show. And, Do you have diarrhea? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly and uh and yeah i think i think that's gonna that's gonna do it for us but yeah thanks thanks to Catherine. she's been doing this uh, for months uh, several quite a few months now and doing it voluntarily and it's yes, really and really in kind. pain too but she's getting better yeah and she's healing up and jason lawson for the show notes and and, 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 and lee yeah and lee for trying to get us on our podcast running again yes that's right lee and uh well thanks everybody Thank you. Yes. Thank you. But most importantly, those other people who live in our houses. Yes. Uh, you know, our Amy families. and and Marcy. Marcy was actually on the show tonight. Maybe you noticed her in bed during the uh <laughs> during my tip of the week. She's like, I'm getting out of here. No, no, no. It's funny. Stay right where you are. <laughs> She's sitting there playing words with friends in bed on her iPhone. And, <laughs> Anyway, but thanks to them. We love them. And, uh, and, and, and hopefully all of you had a wonderful Valentine's day. The world didn't end, although it came damn close. Uh, but, yeah. and, uh, and God willing next week, we'll be here again, uh, for our Oscar party. So anyway, I'm Dan Leonard in the East and I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East, East West, West audio, audio body, body shop. shop. Have a great week, everybody. Uh, and we'll see you next time. See you next time, everybody. <laughs>